हेलो एंड वेलकम गाइस टू अपग्रेड आज के इस वीडियो में यार डिस्कस करेंगे एस एस सी जेई मेन टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी थ्री का हाल ही में जूनियर इंजीनियर इलेक्ट्रिकल मैकेनिकल एंड सिविल का मेंस एग्जामिनेशन कंडक्ट कराया गया है टोटल यहां पर बात करें क्वेश्चंस की तो हंड्रेड क्वेश्चंस पूछे गए थे नोटिफिकेशन पहले ही निकाला गया था कि इस बार पैटर्न चेंज हुआ है जैसा कि आप सबको पता है यहाँ पर टोटल हंड्रेड क्वेश्चन पूछे गए थे ईच क्वेश्चन ऑफ बींग ऑफ थ्री मार्क्स टोटल मार्क्स इज ऑफ थ्री सो so, यहाँ पर मैक्सिमम मेमोरी बेस्ड क्वेश्चन डिस्कस करने की कोशिश की जाएगी तो अगर आप इस चैनल पर पहली बार विजिट कर रहे हैं तो चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करिएगा इस वीडियो को लाइक जरूर करिएगा तो बिना किसी देरी के आज का वीडियो शुरू करते हैं तो यहाँ पर देख सकते हैं सबसे पहला क्वेश्चन पूछा गया था न्यूमेरिकल ऑन इकोनॉमिक जनरेशन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन पूछा गया था हेयर द कैंडला पर मीटर स्क्वायर इज अट ऑफ इट इज अट ऑफ ल्यूमिनेस और द ब्राइटनेस सो कैंडल पर मीटर स्क्वायर is a unit of luminance or the brightness next question was a numerical based on mosfet the next question is the infrared heating emits which radiation so the infrared heating emits the electromagnetic radiation so electromagnetic radiation is emitted when we use infrared heating next question is a numerical If L1 is given as 24 milli henry, L2 is 6 milli henry, then we have to find the value of mutual inductance. The formula for the mutual inductance is given as m is equals to k root of L1 into L2. So here to find the value of maximum mutual inductance, the k value will be equals to one. So m is equals to one multiplied by root of 24 milli henry. Into six milli henry. On multiplying it, we get root of one forty four. So it is a square root of twelve. So m is equals to twelve milli henry is the correct answer. Next question is for the common collector configuration, what is the value of gamma? So here gamma is the current gain of a common collector configuration. So it is a ratio of the emitter current to the base current. Or we can say also it is equals to beta plus one current. Next question is so talking about the highly doping from increasing to decreasing order the highly doped is the emitter terminal, then the collector terminal, and lastly the base terminal. If you are talking about the area, the largest aerial size of a transistor is of the collector. then it is of the emitter and lastly it is of the base but in the question here it is asking about the highest doping in bgt is of it is of emitter so the correct answer is emitter next question is which turbine is used for the high head and the low discharge of water so first of all let's see the how the classification of turbine is done the classification of turbine is mainly in two categories that is impulse and second is the reaction turbine so in impulse turbine the flow of water is tangentially the tangent flow talk about the head it has high head and talking about the specific speed or the discharge of water it will be low low discharge or low speed so in pelton wheel turbine so the example of impulse turbine is pelton wheel turbine now talking about the reaction turbine so in reaction turbine the flow is the flow can be in radial manner or in axial manner so talking about the flow which is in radial manner the head is talking about the head it is medium head it will have medium head and discharge will be also medium medium discharge and the example of radial turbine is francis turbine now talking about the axial flow axial flow the head is low head and the discharge will be high discharge high discharge will be obtained in axial flow the example for the axial turbine it is propeller and the kaplan turbine propeller and second turbine will be kaplan so this is the detail classification of the turbine so now moving towards the question what was asked 
in mains examination is which turbine is used as a high head and low discharge of water so according to the question the correct answer is pelton wheel turbine so the correct answer is pelton wheel turbine next is in underground cables which dielectric is rarely used so the dielectric used in the underground cable is of let's see it is of four types firstly is the solid type second is the liquid type third dielectric can be gaseous type and as fourth is the compound so the example for the solid let's see the firstly the classification and the example and then we will discuss about the which dielectric is used rarely so for the solid dielectric the examples can be the pvc that is polyvinyl chloride type or xlpe and for the liquid it can be mineral mineral oil or the transformer oil transformer oil is also used as a dielectric and the gases is that will be in the form of gas and the compound it is a combination it is a combination of solid and liquid so according to the question the which dielectric is used in rare used rarely so the rarely used dielectric is the gaseous dielectric most used dielectric is the liquid then solid is used and then compound dielectric is used and rarely dielectric used is the gaseous dielectric so the correct option is gas the characteristic of a radial system is firstly the first characteristic of radial system is the that the power flow the power flow in this system is in only one direction it is only in one direction next characteristic is it is the construction it is very cheap very cheap to install and it is very simple also very simple next characteristic can be it has poor reliability it has poor reliability as the power flow is on is in only one direction that's why its reliability is poor the fourth characteristic of radial system can be it has high voltage fluctuation also it will have high voltage fluctuations so these are the characteristics of a radial system next question is what are the advantage of overhead lines with respect to underground so for the advantage of overhead lines the advan first advantage of overhead lines over the underground system is is the cost the cost of the overhead line installation is less as compared to underground next is the flexibility the flexibility of overhead is more than the underground next is the working voltage so it is the advantage of overhead transmission line next advantage it can the next advantage can be the cost of insulator the cost of insulation in as compared to underground cable is less in overhead transmission line so these are the some of the advantages of overhead lines with respect to underground in a star connection the ratio of line voltage and phase voltage so as we all know the in star connection the line current is equals to the phase current but the line voltage is equals to root 3 times of the phase voltage so this is the relation between the line voltage and phase voltage in star connection next question is related to the tariff cost the tariff cost total cost is equals to a plus b kilowatt plus c kilowatt r here c represents which cost so as we all know here a represents the fixed cost b represents the semi fixed cost and the c represents the running cost c represents the running cost in kilowatt hour so the correct answer is running cost next question was what or define the earnest money so in simple words if i say what is in in a simple words the earnest money is the money you can say it is a good faith 
it is a which is deposited as a good faith good faith deposit in any company or in organization before the by filing the tender is it refundable or not earnest money is refundable refundable earnest money is refundable and it is a type of good faith deposit to which is deposited to any organization or company before the final tender is released next is what are the expenditure on the supervision charges of the total cost so the supervision charges is ranges between 1% to 1.5% of the total cost so the correct answer is 1% to 1.5% the application of an over excited synchronous motor is so as we all know over excited synchronous motor works as a synchronous condenser synchronous condenser whose function is to improve the power factor of a system or the line see the application of over excited synchronous motor is the to improve the power factor next question was related to the synchronous speed first so we will write the formula ns is equals to 120 f upon p so this is the formula for the synchronous speed next question is the design of distributor depends on so while designing the distributor wire it we have to take the consideration of the voltage drop in the line so the voltage drop is the main design consideration for the distributor system distributing classification of wind turbine so the wind turbine is mainly categorized into two parts that is horizontal axis wind turbine horizontal axis wind turbine and second is the vertical axis wind turbine so in two categories the wind turbine is being classified the distance of 80 km to 200 km transmission line is it is the range of medium transmission line so medium transmission line ranges between the distance of 80 km to 200 or 240 km in some books 200 km is mentioned and in some books 240 km is being mentioned so accordingly it is it ranges for the medium transmission line next is the function of a control rod so control rod firstly it is used in a nuclear power station control rod is used in nuclear power plant and its function is absorb the neutrons absorb the neutrons or to control or to control the chain reaction so this is the function of the control rod of a nuclear power station the function of a moderator is the function of a moderator is to slow down the slow down the fast moving because the in nuclear power plant the neutron moves very fast rate at very fast rate and the function of moderator is to slow down the fast neutrons fast moving neutrons in nuclear fission reaction so to slow down the moving fast moving neutrons is the function of the moderator next is the question related to the two value capacitor motor what will be the armature reaction when the alternator is working on zero power factor if the alternator is working on the zero power factor lagging then the armature reaction will be demagnetizing but if the alternator is working on zero power factor leading then the armature reaction will be magnetizing in nature next question is the condition for the maximum efficiency so for the transformer to have the maximum efficiency the condition is when the core loss is equals to when the core loss becomes equals to the copper loss the maximum efficiency of a transformer can be obtained the direction of rotation of a dc motor is applied according to the fleming's left hand rule so according to fleming's left hand rule the direction of rotation of a dc motor can be applied next is also related to a dc series motor the speed and the armature current graph rela relation the relation between the speed and the armature current is inversely proportional to each other so drawing the graph 
between the both so on x axis will be the armature current and the speed is plot on the y axis the graph is the inversely proportional to each other like this so this is the correct answer next is the question was asked related to the armature diverter control method of a dc machine a question was also based on milliman's theorem on resonant circuit a question was also on the split phase motor a series resonant question was also asked question was also asked related to the auto transformer next is the magnetic susceptibility of a ferromagnetic material so the magnetic susceptibility of a ferromagnetic material is very high very high and positive the value is positive and the value is very high next is starting torque of a split phase motor is it is about 1.5 times of the full load torque torque at full load the starting torque is 1.5 times of the torque at the full load next question is asks related to the quality factor of resonant circuit next question asks is the current in the parallel resonant circuit so the current in parallel resonating circuit is minimum and the impedance is z is very high in parallel resonating circuit so these are the maximum memory based question of ssc j mains 2023 which i have discussed in this video if you find this video helpful give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel we'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye